science fiction is often seen as hopeful. By using the lens of future technologies, far-off planets, and fantastical situations, science fiction can offer a mirror for the reader to look upon situations and problems in their own lives. In much of Western science fiction, even if the protagonist dies, a glimmer of hope will remain that wasn't present at the beginning of the book. There is no such glimmer in The Slinks. The Slinks, written by Tatiana Tolstaya and published by New York Review Books in 2000, is a postmodern, post-apocalyptic science fiction novel. The book focuses on Benedict, a copyist working in the town of Fyodor Kuzmitz that has developed in the ruins of old Moscow in the century following the blast. Described in the mutated language of the people as a result of a game with arms, the blast was some kind of nuclear explosion that set back Russian society hundreds of years, with the inhabitants of Fyodor Kuzmitz living in a kind of medieval township. The wheel is a new invention. Pre-blast books are considered dangerous and are confiscated by the ominous sanatorians, and mice are the primary currency for most people. The blast also caused mutations, referred to in the book as consequences. There are villagers with coxcombs over their faces, or ears that grow across their entire body. There are those with clawed feet, and those with tiny tails. Some even have the ability to breathe fire. Some consequences are so severe that those inflicted are considered subhuman, such as the Degenerators, a half-human, half-horse people with hair covering their entire body that are used to pull the sleighs and wagons around the village. Benedict begins as a very traditional post-apocalyptic fiction character. He lives in what he believes is a fairly normal life, with only the reader being painfully aware of just how miserable it really is for him. Eating mice to survive and sewing their pelts together for warmth is just another typical day in Benedict's life. His work consists of copying the decrees and writings of the town's namesake and Mirza, a kind of feudal lord and dictator, Fyodor Kuzmitz. Nearly everyone in the town is under the impression that all the writings and inventions of Fyodor's are his own. But again, the reader is one step ahead. We are aware that Fyodor is simply claiming pre-blast works as his own. After Benedict discovers that he's been copying old text once he's been shown a pre-blast book, the story finally gains momentum. Until it all unravels into confusing and seemingly unrelated narrative cul-de-sacs. Frequently throughout the links, I felt that Tolstaya was more focused on providing criticism of Russian history than providing a satisfying narrative. Corruption begetting revolution, revolution begetting dictatorship, and dictatorship begetting corruption. While the middle of the book, after Benedict discovers the lie, engaged me, I did struggle for much of the read. The opening 70 pages or so were very confusing, as Tostaya throws you into the deep end as you are submerged in postmodernist language, a very unfamiliar situation with a unique style of prose that does little to help you acclimatize to it. The books aren't a constant stream of misery and bleakness, and there are moments of comedy sprinkled throughout, typically in the interactions between the different social classes and what each of them considered to be normal. Benedict becomes engaged to woman at his job, and discovers that his consequence, a small tiny tail, isn't normal, so he cuts it off in fear of being ostracized by his fiance. It is only when he sits down for dinner with his in-laws does he realize that they too have their own consequence. They all have giant clawed feet. Yet, despite these moments of humor, I was frustrated throughout much of the book. Part of that frustration might just be how rooted the book is in Russian history, Russian literature, and social commentary. While I'm able to understand the comparisons and critiques of Russia's particular brand of revolution and dictatorship, I feel that much of the book's commentary on literature completely threw over my head. Towards the middle of the book, Tolstoy starts quoting a lot from Russian poets and authors, and I am sure there is some greater meaning behind the texts and the authors she chose. I just don't know what that greater meaning is. The book was published and written in Russian, and then translated into English by Jamie Gambrell, and I felt throughout the book that there was something missing. Not from the plot, though I had my issues with that, 
but from the text itself. Uh, an intangible Russianness that was removed inadvertently when it was translated into English. Tolstaya plays around a lot with the language and syntax of the townspeople, and while I often understood the joke that she was making, I had a sense that it landed better in the original language. If I were more familiar with the works that Tolstaya was referencing, then perhaps Gambrell's translation would have resonated with me more. Earlier this year, I read Senselessness by Horatio Castellanos Moya and translated into English by Catherine Silver. What was so impressive about that book for me was how successfully Silver is managing to translate much of the crucial elements of the book. In Senselessness, the protagonist becomes increasingly obsessed with the broken Spanish slash English that the indigenous peoples used to describe the atrocities committed against them by the military. Silver managed to keep the integrity and poetry of these words when translated into English. The Slinx is unique in its language and has a very interesting setting, but a lack of momentum and structure left me uninterested. By the last hundred pages, I had lost interest in Benedict. Not because he had failed in the traditional hero's journey, that in itself was an interesting subversion of expectation, but because the story meandered so much that I lost patience. I would compare this links to 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Both are postmodern books that are focused on deconstructing their authors' respective countries, and both are books that I felt I appreciated more than I actually enjoyed. And there lies my trouble with the Slinx. I know that it's a good book, that it delves into a country's complex and trouble history in a unique way. I know that what I'm reading is considered by many to be literature, and therefore I should have nothing but universal acclaim. But ultimately, I just didn't enjoy it very much. Perhaps if you go in like I did, expecting a somewhat traditional science fiction or post-apocalyptic story, you'll be disappointed. But if you go in expecting and wanting a postmodern deconstruction of Russian social issues, then this might be the book for you. I just don't know how big an audience that actually is. Would you read a book? Would you read this book? What do you say?